Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy. My name is Pramod and in this video, we are going to discuss about the seven principles of software testing that you should know. All right, so let's get started. So guys, uh, this is a video about the seven important principles, but the important point here is that these are the principles that you should know. And these are the principles especially taught whenever we are doing the manual testing and we are whenever we are learning about the manual testing principles. All right, and trust me guys, these are the principles that you should always take care of take care whenever you are doing the any kind of manual testing all right so without any uh, let's start with the first principle the first principle says that testing shows the presence of defect so basically the principle these are the principles which basically give you the mindset that what exactly is a software testing the first principle says that the testing shows the presence presence of defect it basically means that whenever we are doing the software testing it's just going to reduce the number of defects it's not gonna remove the 100% bugs right even after doing the multiple times of testing 100% bug free software we cannot produce right so that's what the principle is all about we are just uh, we can say that we have done some multiple type of testing and we can uh, this application will have very less number of bugs may or may not right so that's what this first principle is talk about. The second uh, principle talk about is that exhaustive testing is not possible. It is very wonderful principle guys. It means that it is impossible. Means a software cannot be 100% tested. It can be 95% tested, it can be 97% tested, but 100% testing is not possible. We cannot test any any kind of software with, with exhaustively, okay? And uh, instead, it can only be it can only test some of the test cases and assume that that will work with and produce the correct for the other kind of test cases. It basically means that uh, we can only assume that. Uh, so suppose uh, there are like hundred test cases that we need to run, and in software testing, what we are doing is that we are executing certain test cases, which and and assuming that uh, that because these test cases are working fine. And because of the testing techniques that we have used uh, in the black box testing, for example, boundary value, equivalence partition, pairwise, decision table, these kind of test techniques, we are assuming that other test cases will work fine. And uh, that's what this principle talk about. All right. The third principle is very important one. It basically says that early testing is, uh, you should do the early testing. It basically means whenever we have a SDLC's life cycle, for example, it's a software developing life, life cycle, right? So, wherever we want to do software testing, the defect, defect, the defect which is getting detected in early stage is very less expensive. For example, the bugs in the production are very much costly because they these are the bugs which are basically encountered by the users and they are going to impact your business, right? So if we do the early testing this, this is what the principle of the software testing talk about right so if we do the early testing definitely it's going to help us and if you want to do a better software testing start the software testing as early as possible in your sdlc life cycle all right this is the fourth principle talk about the defect clustering it basically means that in any project the small number of module can contain most of the, most of the bug it basically means uh, it basically follows a par uh, Pareto principle, which says that, which basically says that 80% of the software defects come from the 20% of the modules. I mean to say, uh, whatever, you, for example, if you have 100 test cases to execute, the 20% of the test case will basically going to give you the bugs, and the 80% of the test case that you are running will going to pass and will give you the expected behavior. So, uh, defect have a clustering mechanism. It means that these 20% of the module that you are testing will have the important box. And this is uh, like a law of, you can say this is a law of Pareto and uh, it's basically an imp basically say, states the that defect, basically explains the defect clustering, all right? And the fifth principle basically talks about the pesticide paradox. It basically means that whenever you are repeating the same number of test cases, again and again, you will not able to find any kind of bug. So every time it is suggested that uh, whenever 
you have certain test cases you should review them you should update them so that they they are able to find a new box all right so this is what this fifth principle talk about and the sixth principle of software testing is talk about that testing is a context dependent which basically means that testing approach depends on the context of software development and different type of testing need to be performed for different type of uh, different means base it basically means that the, it is a context dependent means we need different type of soft different type of software we need to perform the different type of testing right and for example the testing of e-commerce site is different than a testing an android application right e-commerce site will have certain purchase mechanism and it's a it kind of a web application we will require certain kind of different type of testing completely whereas in an android application will have certain different uh, ways to test it out for example they have certain cases like uh, 3g connection 4g connection net no network connection these kind of stuff right so they have a different different type of a, uh, uh, type of a software testing we need to do the seven principle talk about the absence of error policy it basically says that if a build software is 99 percent bug free it doesn't and it does not follow the user requirement then it's unusable then it's basically not usable it basically means that if you are developing a software and it's a perfect software right but it is not up to the user requirement then there is no need of this software right and this basically talks about the seventh principle so whenever uh whenever you uh, whenever we think about whenever we are doing manual testing especially manual testing we need to take care of these seven principles uh, to keep in mind and whenever we are creating certain test cases or whenever we are doing a project of software testing we need to take care of these seven principles right and that's how they are gonna help you in this case all right so uh that's all about this video and uh, let me know in the comments uh, what what do you feel about the seven principles and what do you understand about it so let's recap quickly uh, in a simple manner the first principle talks about the testing show the presence of defects and exhaustive testing is nearly impossible means you can execute 95 percent of your test cases but uh, five percent of the case you're going to miss eventually test early as as possible uh, because early testing in your SDLC lifecycle will save you a lot of money and deferred clustering basically talk about that 20 uh, that the 20 percent of the tasks that you are doing means your 80 percent of the efforts will going to waste but the 20 percent that you are doing will give basically give you the bugs right and the pesticide paradox basically talks about that if you don't update your test cases and you are repeating the same test case again again you will not able to find any kind of test uh, any kind of bug all right and six seven, uh, six principle talks about that every kind of software needs a different kind of testing right and the seven principles basically says that if the software doesn't follow any kind of user requirement and it's a 99 percent bug free that means it's a unusable and we should not use it all right so that's all about this video and i hope you are able to find i will suggest you to screenshot this uh, principle and uh, remember them understand them and whenever you have a manual kind of manual pro uh, project manual testing project going on just keep these principles in mind and you will eventually uh, be able to follow the principle of software testing all right this is your host Pramod, and uh, see you in the next video bye